Hello, this is Jordan, and this is your Precious Metals Market Update. This is being recorded on the evening of Tuesday, November 15th, 2016. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the medium-term outlook for both gold and gold stocks. And starting off, I'm talking about gold first. And this is a monthly candle chart of gold, and it includes the 20-month and 40-month moving averages. Historically, these two moving averages have been very important for gold. The 20-month is equivalent to the 400-day, which I frequently use. The 40-month I don't use that often, but for gold, the 40-month, just look at a 45-year chart, and you can see the 40-month moving average has been a great indicator of support and resistance. And where gold is now, it is, I mean, it has bounced a little bit where we've probably begun a short-term rebound, but there's been a lot of technical damage in the last couple of weeks, not just post-election, but there was before the election. Uh, I expected gold could come down and test the low 1200s and the 20-month uh, or the 400-day moving average, which is in the low 1200s at 1203. And I expected a big bounce from there. It's still possible, but at this point, I'm changing my tune, and I think gold is going to break below a key support at 1200 to 1210 and there's also some support at 1180 but uh, once it loses 1200 I expect it's going to lose 1180 quickly also and that gold could come all the way back down and retrace this great move that it's had uh, in the short term gold could rally as high as 1250 or even up to 1280 ish before it turns down again but the big picture here is really clear. Gold is starting to look a lot more bearish based on the medium term trend. We're talking about the next three or four months or so. And uh, I, I think the probability right now favors that gold could come down and make a massive double bottom and, and retest that 1050 low. So uh, in short, the outlook for the next several months looks to be bearish, but the outlook after that, super, super bullish. Uh, and so Again, losing one thing I want to look for the rest of this month is to see if gold can hold above the 40 month, which is at 1232. So gold is bouncing. Let's see if it can hold above that uh, and give some hope that I'm going to be wrong. Uh, but uh, um, I, I, I don't think so. I, I We should bounce here, but this still looks really precarious to me. And uh, let's get to the next slide. Here's another reason. And this is the gold bull analog, and I show the strongest analog here for a couple of reasons. Uh, but first of all, gold has been following the trend of the analog until uh, looks like uh, September, and it's it, it because at the, at the second half or the end of September, that's when gold should have started to rally. It failed. It's continued to move lower. You can see that it's the the bull market has gone off course. And that's obviously negative. And this is the same thing if I show the Huey correction analog and I show the, the bull analog for the Huey and the Huey, I'm talking about the gold stocks. If I look at the correction analog, the overall bull, bull analog, those things have gone, they went off course by a little bit last week. Now it's still possible they could have a huge rally and really save the bull market that, uh, that's been in effect since the beginning of the year. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to happen. I'm, I, I doubt it's going to happen, actually. So uh, based on history, both in the stocks and in gold, we're seeing that the bull market move has gone off course. So, I mean, that's giving us a warning, as is the price action, which we discussed in the last chart. Now, this chart, we're looking at uh, a couple of uh, rate gold ratios. I mean, these are intermarket indicators. In the last video on my channel, I talked about um, the importance of gold, particularly against bonds, which is there at the top. I mean, we show that this is a, a daily chart. We show the 400-day moving average. And the reason this is significant is because the market is transitioning from kind of a deflationary or a disinflationary view to a more inflationary view. I mean, we have Trump has won the election. The Republicans control Congress. So uh, their policies are going to be very, very inflationary. Uh, I believe we're going to see tax cuts. We're going to see huge infrastructure spending. The deficits are going to be huge. Uh, and also, uh, you know, economists have talked about helicopter money. 
maybe in the form of tax rebates. I mean, remember, President Bush did that, I think, once or twice. So all the, all the new economic policy is going to be designed to get money into the hands of people, into the hands of the economy. And so we're going to see inflation increase. I mean, it's already been increasing. Uh, and so it could perhaps accelerate uh, in the uh, quarters and years to come. And so initially, uh, these higher interest rates, because the market's concerned about that, you know, we're seeing higher rates, higher bond yields. Initially, that's negative for gold and precious metals. But overall, it, it doesn't change the real big picture fundamentals uh, of, of persistent negative real interest rates. I really think we're going to see that continue um, and, and increase on the negative side. But in the short term, gold, gold is being affected by the weakness in bonds. And until this ratio at the top breaks out, and we see gold breaking out against bonds. I mean, that would signal that the market is now, gold is now benefiting from inflation and benefiting uh, from the weakness in bonds. And uh, uh, secondarily, we can also focus on gold against the dollar. Uh, and, and part of, you know, the dollar right now is on the cusp of a major breakout. And that could be part of the reason why gold has really a technical breakdown below 1,200 in a, in a move down to a double bottom which could last, uh, you know, who knows, three, four, maybe the most five months. Uh, you know, gold is priced in dollars, so the U.S. dollar price is going to be weak when gold is falling. I mean, as it is now, when gold's already weak, and, and combine that with the dollar, probably showing more strength in the weeks and months to come. And we can see that in the ratio at the bottom. You know, gold, it's already lost the 400-day moving average, which it was holding above. So, Watch that to see if it can make a double bottom or maybe it goes lower. But the real key here is the ratio at the top, gold against bonds. It tried to break out in the last week or so, failed. Um, I, bonds are really, really oversold like gold, but I, I think bonds are going to outperform gold over the next uh, couple weeks or so, and we'll see this ratio come down. But uh, maybe it'll be early next year when this ratio breaks out. But in addition to gold against foreign currencies and gold against the stock market, which, by the way, gold against equities – fallen below the 80 week moving average uh, so that's not good but this is given the macro environment that we're in of higher inflation uh, that transition this is the ratio that we want to watch gold against bonds now uh, next we have uh, kind of a projection of what could happen with gold this is the weekly chart and so gold potentially breaking down retesting the low i mean it could set up a, a massive double bottom which is a, a double bottom is a really really bullish pattern I mean a do, it's another way of uh, another way of saying it is a W pattern and uh, some historical examples of this which are really really bullish gold in 1999 to 2001 it had a double bottom it did, performed fantastic as we all know I mean after the 2001 low another example is the stock market in 1980 to 1982 it performed really well after 1982 and uh, with with respect to gold right now, um, we could see something similar. I mean, you see the moving averages there. We know supports at 1,200, but if gold loses 1,200, it's probably going to come down to 1080 or 1050. Those are the targets that I'm looking at. Now, if you go back, uh, let me go back a couple slides. If you go back to this bull analog, if gold does break down and make that double bottom, we would expect the rebound that gold would eventually have uh, following that W bottom to be very similar to the blue here, which is the two strongest rebounds from 1976 and 2008. One thing we see here based on those, gold went from 1050 to about 1425 in three or three and a half months. So and if we look at the, if you keep that in mind and you look here, so gold snapping back to, to major resistance there at, at 1350, 1375, I, it, it's really possible that could only happen in three or four months. So this possible breakdown could be a huge fake out that uh, really traps people who get bearish on the way down. And I want to go back to the analog chart again. Again, huge rise in the first three or four months. It consolidates, grinds higher. Something to note, uh, in, in the first six months, it gets above 1,500. And then 18 months after the bottom, it gets all the way up to close to 1900. So, um, I mean, if this plays out, you could be looking at what's 18 months in uh, April or May, the spring of 2017, 18 months. I mean, you're looking at uh, around uh, November 
for October, November of the end of 2018. And gold possibly you know, getting back to 1800 or even higher based on that analog. So that's what history says. If it, And I mean, there's no guarantee that we're going to follow that. But if gold comes down here and has a big rebound off of 1050 or even 1080, successfully retest the bottom, I, I think you're going to see a very, very strong rise coming off the bottom. Now, fundamentally, I mean, th this is a whole nother video we'll do possibly in the next couple of days. But fundamentally, I do not see major changes with negative real rates. I mean, this is this just looks like a temporary breakdown triggered by higher nominal rates and uh, the dollar rising. But uh, again, in the big picture, I mean, even just look at what Jeff Gunlock has been saying. I mean, he's calling for uh, higher inflation and even even uh, three percent inflation by April 2017. I mean, just it, it, even if we knew that was going to happen, how many times would the Fed hike in that environment? I mean, one Fed hike was 92 percent priced in coming into today. Maybe they'd only hike a couple more times, but that would put the Fed funds rate at one percent with with inflation at three percent in that scenario five months from now, and that puts the real Fed funds rate at minus two percent, which is even um, is even worse than the real Fed funds rate right now, which is around minus 1%, uh, or maybe a tiny bit higher. So what I'm trying to point out here is that the fundamentals for gold, uh, you know, maybe by the, the second quarter of next year should should really be even better than they are now, maybe accelerating on the bullish side. And that's why, uh, that's why I think this potential breakdown that we could have here is really just a technical breakdown and, uh, you know, not the start of something else. Uh, now, that brings up uh, an important question, the gold stocks. I mean, how much lower could the gold stocks go? Are they going to go all the way back down and do a round trip? I mean, we know in January they were historically oversold. I mean, they were almost at 90-year lows based on uh, just a number of things that I looked at, their relative value to gold, their relative value against the gold stocks. I mean, the worst bear market in 90 years. Uh basically the longest bear market, the worst in terms of price in 90 plus years. Uh, so given all those things, um, even with gold making a double bottom, I don't see the miners going all the way back down to their January lows. But in the short term here, the miners are definitely bouncing. And uh, if to really avoid this bearish scenario over the next couple months, this has to be a major low for the miners. I mean, at the top there, we have GDX with the 80 month moving average. You can see it's bounced off it in the last couple days. Um, but still, the chart, the price action, based on everything I'm looking at, it's bearish. And we would need to see uh, GDX. I mean, it closed at 22 today. I mean, GDX would have to make a weekly close above uh, the recent high there at, at 25 or 26 to really negate this bearish outlook. And I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, we're bouncing here, and I think we're going to see uh, more weakness. But again, just to cover all bases, G GDX, if it can hold above this low, and this is an important low, uh, then it kind of negates that bearish scenario I'm talking about. GDXJ has been stronger. Um, it, it, it also bounced off support. I think it made a low of 32. I was looking for 33.34. The 80-week moving average is at 30. Um, so look for GDXJ. It could possibly rally up to 39. And I believe my target for GDX was about 23 and a half. So uh, the first thing we want to watch with the miners is to see where they close the month. Can they have a big rebound in the next couple weeks and then hold on to those gains into the next month? That would be a positive sign. But still, I'm leaning to the bearish scenario. And I mean, how much lower could the miners go? Um, obviously, I'm not sure. But looking at uh, GDX there at the top, I mean, it closed at 22. After 20, if it loses 20, it has support, I believe, around 16. So uh, 16, 14, if we do get the double bottom scenario, 16 and 14 would be the targets I'm looking at uh, with respect to GDXJ and potential targets with gold retesting 1050. I would look at... Uh, about, uh, I looked at this before, uh, 26 or maybe 23, just roughly speaking. I mean, we'll have to see how things uh, develop in the days and weeks to come. But uh, those are potential downside targets if gold breaks below $1,200. With all that being said, you can 
follow all my work at thedailygold.com. Go there, opt in for my free newsletter, and uh, you'll get my next free weekly update on Sunday. And uh, I, I, I might possibly send something out uh, in the next day or two. But uh, every Sunday morning with that update, you get my recent thoughts on the sector and some snippets from my premium update, which I do the day before. Uh, this was one of the longest analysis videos I've done. I w didn't intend for it to be this long, but if you reached this point, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate your interest, and I look forward to publishing another video update more on the fundamental side, possibly in the next couple of days. Again, you can go to the dailygold.com uh, and uh, opt in there for my free newsletter. Thank you so much for listening and watching to this video. I really appreciate your interest, and I look forward to publishing another update in the days ahead. Thanks.